Aleluya. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Tonight we are privileged and blessed to have with us our very own father. Who needs no introduction. Giving honor to whom honor is you. Let us welcome to the pulpit our father, Bishop. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here. We are, we are blessed that you have gathered us together at this time. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you take control, lead us, and help us. We thank you for your power that is here today in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Are you glad to be here? Wow. Well, we are also excited to be here to join you for this camp for a couple of days. I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to your hearts. Amen. Sometimes when we come for camps, you know, people have a lot of Happiness, laughter, joy, and all that. But you must always remember that a camp is a very serious thing. And it's about life and death. It's about people's lives. Most of our pastors, the people who are pastors, have become pastors through camps. And many people who gave their life to work for the Lord did so through camps. So a camp is a serious thing. Amen. Amen. So I want you to have that mind and that heart as you are here. That I'm at a very serious place. A moment to really listen to the Lord and flow with the will of God. Amen? Amen. Are you excited? Yes. All right. So, we thank the Lord. And uh, you already know the theme of the camp, Mission South Africa. Prepare the way of the Lord. All right? I can give you the meaning of that straight away at the beginning. Prepare the way of the Lord means prepare for the Lord. You get it? It means prepare. It's, a myst it's like a spiritual way of saying prepare for the Lord. Because prepare the way of the Lord is to prepare for the Lord. Amen. You don't have any windows here at all, right? Do you have air conditioning? No air conditioning. But you have no windows. So, but it's not hot. It's cool. Is this your own invention? Yeah. Hallelujah. So, um, prepare the way of the Lord means prepare for the Lord. 
Amen. Amen. And we are going to prepare for the Lord in South Africa. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you prepared to prepare the way for the Lord? Amen. God expects great things of you in South Africa. Are you going to give him the great things he expects from you? Are you sure? Hmm? Where's Corolla? Yeah, come, I need you. You've got to sing for me. To everything there is a season, to every purpose there's a time. The one who makes the whole world has everything in his hands. He wants the world to know him in all his righteousness, and he has called us. To the kingdom for such a time as this. It's a time to believe. It's a time to love and live. Danny? There was a time we received, but now it's time for us to give. Standing hand in hand together. Let's reach out and touch our world. Can you hear the Spirit calling? Can you hear the Spirit calling? Can you hear the Spirit calling? It's our time. It's our time to believe. It's our time to love and live. There was a time we received, but now it's time for us to give. Standing hand in hand together, let's reach out and touch our world. Can you hear the Spirit calling? Can you hear the Spirit calling? Can you hear the Spirit calling? It's our time. Amen. It's our time. Tell somebody it's our time. All right. Now, just as uh, Corolla has sung, it's our time, and it's a time of this generation of South Africans. You know, when we're having this camp, a lot of different people wanted to come to this camp. And I said, I don't want, any time we have a camp and people come from somewhere else, not that they are contaminating the meeting, but they are diluting the responsibility that is for you. In the presence of other people, dilute the responsibility that you have. Because you as South Africans, or dwellers in South Africa, have a responsibility which nobody else can take or can do. All right? So, every generation and every group has its role to play. Right? When I first started coming to South Africa, um, that was um, 20 years ago. 20 years ago. I, I first started coming here. Right? What? Right. I was 30 years old. I'm now 50. Yeah. So, um, my time, my generation, you know, my role 
will come to an end. You know, everybody's role comes to an end. You get it? And so, like, whilst you were there, what, what did you do? What did you do when, when you were there? When you were on the scene? You get it? Are you, are you still around? Yeah. <laughs> so every generation, a generation is like um, a group of people who are born in the same time and are living in a particular period. That's a generation. So every generation has what it is supposed to do. All right? So in your generation, uh, what, what did you do? And what are you going to do? For instance, if you take Mandela, Nelson Mandela, Madiba, is that what you call him? Yeah. If you take him, his, 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 his group, you know, his group, um, 27 years he was in prison. So that is 27 years before apartheid came to an end. I think 94, right? Yeah, I think I came in 95. Um, 24, 27 years before then, he was in prison. So in his generation, there were younger people in his generation was fighting for freedom for South Africa. So that is his generation's contribution. And he, he fought for it by going to prison for 27 years and won the hearts of everybody and the sympathies. Everybody knows what you've done in 27 years. You have been locked up for 27 years. Now there's the next group Right, they would not have to fight for freedom. <laughs> yeah. Because they, they have already the freedom. And have been bought in, born into it and do not even understand what apartheid was. Most of you here don't understand apartheid. You have to read the history book to understand it. Because you are not part of the struggle. Like Peter was part of the struggle. <laughs> Are you there? Yes. Yeah. So, every generation has three things that it must do. Number one, you have to serve your generation. You have to serve the generation. Three duties of a generation or your generation. Acts 13 Verse 36. Acts 13, verse 36. It says, For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep and was buried with his fathers and saw corruption. Amen. So David, after he had served his generation, you see, you serve your generation. Right? And so you over here in South Africa are responsible. Are you with me? are responsible to serve your generation. You are responsible to serve this generation with something. So the question is, what did you do and what are you going to do? Are you there? Yeah. And so this generation of South Africans is depending on you to do certain things. Amen. Amen. Is there a fan on somewhere? A generator. Okay. Now, so you must get ready. 
this evening session is very short. We're just opening and then we're going to sleep because we are all tired from traveling, isn't it? We start early in the morning tomorrow. But we are just starting so that we've started. Amen. What do you think? Good idea? Yeah. So this, this, your, your, your group, your group are supposed to do something. And then, even within the church, there are groups. Because out of even this church, we have a generation that were there at the very beginning. With, starting with Franz and his colleagues. The first person I met in South Africa was Franz, one of the first people. When I, he, was at the, he was at the airport. <laughs> yes. So even within the church, there are generations within the church. So after Francis' generation, there's another generation of South Africans younger than his generation who are also here. All right? And you also have to serve something. Yeah. So, each generation better make sure you serve well. Because what you serve affects the others. And if you come up, you have to do your, your part. When you are playing a relay, running a relay, they always put the fastest person at the end. So that in case somebody they didn't run so fast. Our last person, who is our best runner, is going to be able to. All right. Welcome, Cape Townians. All right. We are talking about serving our generations. Welcome. We are talking about serving our generation. And I'm saying that there are generations within the generation. So, we usually save the, the best for the last. So if you are in this generation, you must assume you are the last. And you are probably the best. You are supposed to run fast. Very fast. Amen. Amen. And serve this generation. So listen, all of you here, you know, the people in South Africa are depending on you. I tell you. They are depending on you to serve them with the gospel. They are depending on you to serve South Africa with the gospel. Huh? Yeah. So you can't fail. You can't fail. That is why I say I don't want people who are not in South Africa to come in. Not that they are going to contaminate. But they are going to dilute the responsibility. That you have. There is a burden on your shoulder. When you see others here, you may think that it's all of us. But it's just you. South Africa depends on South Africans. Yeah. South Africa depends on South Africans. If it's going to be anything good here, it's going to depend on you. You have to rise up and do well. It's just like Africa depends on Africans. Missionaries can come, but ultimately, it is the local people rising up with strength who will actually maneuver and do well in a certain way are you listening to me yeah so please serve your generation well with the gospel and so that's why i came here i came to really just encourage you to serve your generation well i don't want you to disappoint them 
I don't want you to fail them. I don't want you to let them down. Not me. Not me. You see, me, I'm fulfilling my ministry. You know, this is one thing people don't realize. <laughs> All of us will stand before God and answer questions. You get it? So, in as much as I, 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 I love you, and I love South Africa and all that. I have a role to play. I cannot do everything. Even if I want to do everything, I can't. When I even try, I would die trying. Yeah. When I calculated even having crusades, which is not having a church, a crusade. A crusade lasts for three days, four days, and it's finished. A church lasts for a, a lifetime. When I calculated having five crusades in every country under the Sahara Desert. Right? Five crusades in every country under the Sahara Desert. Five in one country. It was going to take me 20 years to have Five crusades in Cote d'Ivoire, five crusades in Togo, five crusades in Nigeria, five, only five venues in South Africa, five in Zambia, five in Zimbabwe, five in five, 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 five from below the Sahara, not Algeria, Tunisia. Let us assume that they are even, let's just assume that they are above. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Five, 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 doing 10 crusades a year. 10, I think it was 10. We did a calculation. 20 years. So it will take me from now, 2014, to 2034. Before I can go to every country just to do a crusade, not a church. So, I mean, one, one person can do very little. So God does not even expect me to do certain things. At all. He doesn't even expect me. Because you cannot tell somebody to do something he cannot do. If I came to you as a man and I told you, give birth next year to a child. That would not be fair. Because you don't even have the organs to have a baby. So there is a great responsibility, not on me, on you. But there's a responsibility on me which I am discharging. Look, one of the camps which you will answer for is the camp that we had in Port Elizabeth. What is it called? Awake, O Sleeper. Yeah. At that camp, I always remember mentioning the towns of South, South African towns. We're mentioning so many towns. All those towns that are mentioned in that camp and others are supposed to have churches with pastors and missionaries, lay pastors, full time pastors, any kind, monkey pastor, goat pastor, any type. Once it's a pastor, we just want a pastor. A priest. We need a priest. Are you listening? Yeah. I'm telling you. But I cannot go there. I cannot. So me, me, I've done my part. And I'm here to remind you again of the same thing. Your job. You sit there and let the job, the time finish. You will regret more than anything you've ever regretted. So remember, you have to serve your generation. Number two, you have to value this generation. You have to value your generation.
1 Peter 2 verse 9 says, You are a chosen generation. Amen. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. And holy means special. Holiness does not mean you don't fornicate. But when you say God is holy, it doesn't mean that God doesn't fornicate. The dictionary tells us that if you say something is holy, you mean that it is special, especially in a religious sense. So that's why we have holy garments, holy oil, holy place, holy gown, holy, so many objects are called holy. Because if you say something is special, or you say something is holy, you mean that it is special, especially in a religious way. So you are a holy nation that is special group. Amen. His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Amen. So you must value this generation in the sense that this generation is special to God. That's why he says you are a chosen generation. And the generation that is chosen is a generation that believes it is a chosen generation. So you must, at a point, believe that you are special and very important to God. Are you listening? In his purpose. And that you have a great level of importance and value to God. You see, when you think you are nothing, you just walk about anyhow. But when you, learn, when you realize that I'm, spe I'm a special generation, to do a special job, and that the people who are alive today are a special generation, right? Then you rise up and you do well. This generation, I'll tell you what's going to happen. If this generation of South Africans does not believe in its value, this country will equally fall to other religions, as has happened in West Africa. Yeah. I'll say it again. All these, you can play them many, many years from now. And you hear it. You see that it is true. That if this generation of South Africans does not do what it is supposed to do, eh, and do what God wants you to do, this country will fall to other religions, especially the dominant religion which is spreading and taking over most of the world. As a, as a habit, I don't mention names of religions so that I don't mention it at the wrong place. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. As it has happened in West Africa, and the nations, is there a problem? No problem? And the nations in West, in West Africa have almost all have fallen, except the capital cities have fallen to other religions. Almost all. The ones that you know of as Christian countries, they are capital city Christians. And it's, it's the rest is not. So, I'm saying that if you don't do what you're supposed to do, and you don't see yourselves as a special group of people whom God has destined to do a special work, right, this country is going to fall towards other religions. But it has already started falling towards the Western religion. Which is a religion of homosexuality. It has already started from. You have 
you, South Africa is more like Europe in terms of the things you have fallen to. <laughs> yeah. You have all these other things. So you are like, more like European plagues are coming here. So you have to be, you have to know, when you don't do your part, the country will fall to others. So watch out. Value the people. I value you greatly. That is why I came here. And that is why you can hear camps. You can hear camps where I was preaching to you and I'm preaching to South Africa, all of you, because you are very, very important to God. Very, very important to God. If you don't go out there and you don't do what God wants you to do, South Africans are going to fall to sex, to become sex machines, to become sex addicts, to become homosexuals, are going to fall to HIV, are going to fall to many cases. That's what's going to happen. If you don't go and do what you are supposed to do, that's what's going to happen in South Africa. And there is no way I can do it. If I could, I would. If it was my job, I would do it. But every day I pray. I say, oh Lord, show me what to do. Show me what to do. Because there's so many things I could do. So many, many, many options. My problem is which one. Because I can have a, a camp in Accra with the metro churches or with the Kodesh or with the Kumasi churches or with the northern churches or western churches in just in Ghana or Caribbean churches, American churches, England churches, Swiss churches, European churches, German this, that, that, all of Australia, the feed those in Fiji and Papua New Guinea. And so many, many, many options. When I add it, I, I, I cannot even know where to start and what to do. In crusades, I can go here, I can go here, I can go anywhere. So my problem is not that, oh, would I want to work, but it's about which one should I choose to do. So it's not possible for me. So what I'm here to do is to speak to you. You know, to try to see if God can capture your heart to take him seriously. Because Jesus has been waiting, and I hope he's not waiting in vain. Waiting in vain for you to do what's right and to serve him in your generation. Amen? Are you there or you're going home? Wow. So you've got to serve your generation. You've got to value this chosen generation. And number three, you've got to rebuild this generation. Rebuild this great generation. Isaiah 58. You have to rebuild or build, I should say, the foundations of many generations to come. Amen. Are you listening to me? Are you still here or you've gone home? I'm talking about building the foundations of many generations. Isaiah 58 and verse 12. Those from among you shall build the old wastes. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach and the restorer of streets to dwell in. Amen. It says, you shall lay the foundations of many generations generations. This is what God wants us to do. You see, more generations are going to come after us. South Africans who will never see me 
we will never see Bishop Clufio and even some of you here. Those generations will be affected by the foundations we are able to lay. So that's the foundations of many generations yet to come. So if we do the right things and we are able to set up enough churches and enough bishops and enough buildings and whatever we need, it will be a basis for other people. You get what I'm trying to say? Who will come and be blessed through what you have done. Like when a pastor, Apostle Kingsley came here to start a church, he laid a small foundation, but it is on that foundation that all the other generations are, are we are all depending on that little foundation that he laid and the few people that he gathered around. Do you get it? It's very, very important for us to see that what we are doing today will affect a lot of other people. Amen? Amen. Do you want your daughter to become a sex machine? How many have watched the film Taken? Taken. Taken one. Not taken one. Raise up. How many have not watched it? You need to watch it. So let's do it again. How many have watched it? How many have not watched it? You need to watch it. Why? There are two things to see in that. There are two revelations in that film. God speaks to you through what you see. If you are sensitive to the spirit, you will be spoken to and even in the absence of visions like um, where you say, I, when you close your eyes and I saw an angel and all those type of visions, these ones too are visions. Because Jesus said, for seeing, you shall see. For hearing, you shall hear. But these people, their hearts is very dull. <laughs> Their eyes are closed. So it's like when they even see and when they even hear, they don't think about it and they don't notice it. Yeah. So there are a lot of things that God makes us see. But because it, it does, we don't think about it deeply, our hearts doesn't even work. We don't notice it. But there are two things to see there. One, is that film, I am sure, is, be, is based on kidnapping and abduction of girls and turning them into slaves and sex machines. Oh, every film is usually based on something true that happens. And even today, 200 girls have been abducted in Nigeria. And have been they have, they've, they've, they've stolen them. Uh, the, 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 the rebels, whatever they are called, have stolen them and taken them. To, they say they've taken them to other countries. Two hundred. So all the women have gone on a huge protest march to the government to fight because they say they are also mothers. It's not they are not they are not their children, but they are mothers, and it hurts them. What is happening to? the people's child, somebody's daughter. He went to a school, a boarding school, and took them out of the school. You know? So that is one example where it's happening. But many people in South Africa, young girls, you know, are being turned into sex machines. Is it true or it's not true? Yes. Why do you look at me as though I'm saying something strange? It's like, eh! Ooh! Where is the water? I need some water. Oh, is that all you have? I need a lot of water because anybody who looks at me with accusative eyes, there must be water. Put the water here. 
So better watch your the way you look at me. Okay. Now, young girls are being turned into sex machines and sex slaves. True or not true? Some of you have been machines before. Yeah. You know yourselves. You have been sex machines. Sex slaves. Sex addicts. Yeah, you are addicted to sex. You couldn't stop. Hey! And even though you are not being paid officially, there was a kind of payment. Yeah, bring it. Okay. Give me one and then you keep. I drink some, the rest is for you. <laughs> now listen. Even though you are not taking a salary for your sex you were taking emoluments and benefits yeah and bonuses promotions so and gifts so listen it is happening and some of you now are even still in the trade yeah even though you've come for the camp yeah. if we had a scanner at the door if we had a scanner at the door uh, I don't know what will happen. Quiet. 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 Now, this is not the will of God, and God wants to save many children many people when we first came to south africa no one was getting married nobody was getting married it's like there's nothing like marriage there's nothing like marriage no one marries we just i mean stay around and around and around and around and around it's true now there are many of you who are decently married True or not true? So, there are many, many more who have to be delivered. So that's the first thing you learn from that film. The second one is shepherdorial care, which is, you cannot take my member or my sheep or my something and just go freely like that. No, 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 no. Even one member can give rise to a film. Yeah. You can't just take a person that belongs to me, like one of my church members, my sheep whom I love, or my spiritual children, and walk away. No. It will provoke a big reaction. So you see that from that film. Shepherdorial care. Do you get it? So, you learn a lot. You learn a lot. So, what I'm saying is that God wants us to save this generation 
and rebuild and build the foundation that will affect many other generations yet to come. And I want us to, you know, in this camp meeting, try to shake ourselves of selfishness. You see, selfishness is the, the, the way of the world. If you look at the vision of um, your own Madiba, I don't know if it's, it is his vision, but you know, just what we hear on the radio and so on. But these people, you can never tell what is their real vision, what they are doing. But if you see the vision of whatever, you see that after the founders are gone, the main characteristic of political leadership is selfishness. They don't really care about the people. They are they, they claim to be fighting for. I don't know how it is in South Africa, but in Ghana, that is how it is. I mean, you 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 they they, they do not seem to care about the people they are supposed to be leading at all. At all. Now, I don't know how it is in South Africa. I, 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 never read, I never read South African papers. Even when they give it to me on the plane, I don't read it. So I don't know anything about South Africa. South African politics. Even the Ghana politics. When, now, when I see... Um, them on the news, I immediately switched to James Bond. <laughs> because I know that he at least is being honest that all that he's doing is not true. <laughs> it is just a film. But these people are not telling us that what they are doing is not true. So now I prefer James Bond. I know that the lies, a cow which is swimming, and all the things they are doing, they are all lies. And they have admitted it. At the end of the film, they write, this was a stunt, stunt man, this and that, these are the actors and all that. Yeah, special effects. And we know that it's not true. But these other ones, they don't ever bring. When they finish the news, they should write, stunt man, special effects, script, song, choreography, lies by this, all lies by this, by this, by this. Yeah. So listen, my dear friends, you cannot just sit down and adopt the selfishness that is out there. If you want to see two characteristics of our leadership in the world today, let's, talk, let's stay in Africa because we, we are not Americans. And we don't know what they are doing there. I'm sure they're having the same problems. But at least I'll speak for Ghana. You think about South Africa. Whatever I say about Ghana, I think about it in terms of South Africa. Two major qualities of the leaders, the secular leaders, from the heads, the highest position downwards, are spiritual emptiness and selfishness. You know, they are spiritually empty. They are devoid. Even when they claim to be Christians, they are spiritually void of, of, of any spiritual substance. Yeah. Those who go to churches during election time, pastors will be associating with them and all those, they are sp spiritual emptiness. Many of them have multiple fornicators, serial fornicators and adulterers. Drug dealers, prostitution, stealing, millions, looting. So the, the spirituality is almost zero. And then selfishness, where they think about themselves. Are you listening to me? What is good for me, not what is good for Ghana or South Africa 
or Zimbabwe or wherever. But you see now, there's no Zimbabwean here. It's all South Africans. Because I told the Zimbabwean people they shouldn't come here. I don't want them to dilute what is happening here. Dilute the responsibility that you have. Are you with me? Yeah. Now, wherever you are in the world, if you, are, if you swim in the water, you get wet. And even when you breathe, when you smell something, it means a little of it has dissolved in your nostrils. That's why it's not good to smell certain bad smells. Because that bad smell is dissolving inside and then it transmits a message. And you have it. So some of the bad smells you've been smelling is dissolving inside your nose. Mercy. That's why sometimes the nose itself gets blocked. It's like, tell it. It's enough. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. So as we are in the world, in the, in the South African world, or the Ghanaian world, or the Nigerian world, and that world is full of spiritual emptiness, and that world is full of selfishness. The selfishness seeps into the church. And the spiritual emptiness seeps into the church. So as we are in the world, we suddenly become spiritually empty and become so selfish. Yeah. We become spiritually empty and spiritually selfish. So, so much so that we mimic all. We, we are virtually, what do you call it, um, images of what is in the world. That is why pastors can best be depicted sometimes like the political leaders. We claim to be caring for everybody, but we just care for ourselves. We claim to be spiritual men, but are very spiritually empty. If we'll be very honest with ourselves. So as we are, as we are in this world, let us watch out because the selfishness in the world is coming on us. That is why it's difficult to get many of you to even come to to come out of uh, Haute. Is that what you call it? That place, the, the, yeah, to come out. Because that, that's where there are jobs. Yeah. Even your own hometown where you have stayed, if we send you there, you say, yeah. I, I will never go there. <laughs> Do you know Chia? Yeah. It is a word. Say Chia. Yeah. yeah, it's a word. It means rubbish or stupid. You are joking. Yeah. Your hometown, where you came from. If I say to you to go there, that there are people there who don't know God. And that you have to go there. You just say, yeah. I will never go. You will never go. Take your hometown. Take your hometown. So, selfishness comes. And although we are pastors who claim to be preachers of the word of God, like, I mean, like we are called by God, we are, we are being sent to the nations. Yeah, we claim it. South Africans, I'm talking about South Africans. Not any other country. That's why I, said, I don't want any Zimbabwean or Zambian to any such person to come here. 
yeah, to dilute the responsibility which is on you. You will not go to your own hometown. Just like the politicians have come, many of them, out of poverty. They had nothing. They were strugglers. They were ordinary people. They stood up and said, we are fighting for the common man. You see, the people of South Africa, the people of South Africa, they need, they need liberty. They need uh, freedom. They need uh, equality. They need justice. They need freedom. They need prosperity. They need to have their bread, their chicken, like everybody else. They need, I mean, oh. They, yeah. Yeah. It is not true. It just works. And you see, some of them join words together and memorize them. Yes, they join words together and memorize them for every political speech. Yes. And they say in these days of political instability and turmoil and this, they have words, they just mix them together and they just join it. Always the same. And you too, as a pastor, you preach. You say this, you say that, but I cannot send you. Look, I came to Pretoria, I preached, I said, we have to start 100 churches in uh, Kauteng, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think you have started even five of those churches. Yeah, just in Kauteng, not uh, far away. Not far away, you know? It's like those people, we can lead them to, to go to hell. They should go to hell. I mean, they are, they, are, they, are, they are stupid, foolish ghosts. So let them go to hell. Yeah, that's how we are. We are just like the people that we look at him te- on the television and see this man, he doesn't care about anything. He doesn't care. They are all like, like you, if you... If you in one of my books that, are, you know, right, you see what Hitler said. You have what he said. I, I, I played it out for you to see what he said in public and what he said in private. And you, 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 that's where you see that most of the politicians are liars. What they say in public is different from what they say in private. Hitler would say this, uh, peace, and he would say, I fought myself as a soldier in the First World War. I do not want war. I know what is war. And in private, he would say, the only thing that we need is war, to take more land. Uh, so most of the things are not true. So now when I watch them, that's why I said I prefer to watch James Bond flying, jumping out of a plane, falling onto somebody's parachute. On top of the parachute. <laughs> he, he doesn't have a parachute. Though, but he, he fell out of a plane and onto somebody who was coming down with a parachute. And fell on top of the person's parachute. And was able to fight with the person in the parachute. Take the person's parachute and go and then land. But you see, after the film, after the film, they will say the stunt was done by this person. And that it was acted, that the actor, the first actor, that is all not true. Special effects. But these other ones, they never tell us that there's a stuntman and that they were acting. So I prefer to watch the one where they tell me that it's not, it's just, they're just playing. Are you still around? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just, what I'm trying to explain to you is that we are becoming politicians with speeches in public, but in private we have other things that we will say. In public we will say, I don't want a war, I fought war. He, he, Hitler was given a medal for bravery under fire. Exceptional bravery under fire. It's different bravery without fire is different from bravery under fire. Because a lot of people went you hear, go, 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 they just wee wee, start to wee wee on themselves. It, it's different. But if you are able to be brave under fire, it's different. So he fought and he had even some injuries and so on. You know? So he would use all those to make speeches. But it's not, it's not true. In private, he would say this and that. 
Whoa, we have to, we need more, we need more, they call it Lebensraum. It's a bit like uh, 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 Afrikaans, Lebensraum, what? living space, living room. How do you say it in uh, Afrikaans? This is German, Leben, Leben. Living, living space. Set camera, okay. Something, anyway. All right, are you there? Are you still around? Yeah. So these two spiritual qualities that as politicians have with the spiritual emptiness and selfishness is the environment in which we are working. So it is also seeping onto us. That's why I said that if you swim in water, you come out. If it's sea, the sea, you, are, you have salt. If it's a swimming pool, you have water. You know, and even if you are smelling, it's coming on you. So sometimes you can go into a room and you, you can smell, you come out, you can smell uh, uh, cigarettes because you've been in an environment of smoking. So whatever is in the environment, it just comes on you without you realizing you are becoming like that. It, it just comes on you. And we, we are not realizing that the spiritual emptiness is o o on us. I saw a man, he said he was a Methodist uh, Christian. Then I saw he attended the rally of another religion. And that religion, they sit on the floor to pray. You know? So I saw him also sitting on the floor and doing all the things with the people. And I said, ah, I thought you were a Methodist Christian. You will you ever see those people coming for communion or coming to join whatever? You will never see it. They will burn Bibles, they will destroy whatever. If you try to do anything like that, you see what kind of reaction it will bring. You know? But you see that even those who claim Christianity, they are spiritually empty and they never even help Christ. They don't even help the church. They even fight the church. I tell you. So I want you to be careful in this time, in this era, you have to be very careful of the emptiness and the spiritual selfishness. Otherwise, those two things are going to take away from the work that you've got to do in your generation. What are the three things you are going to do for your generation? I can't hear you. Serve my generation. I didn't hear you. Value your generation. What type of generation are you? A chosen generation. Amen. And number three, build your foundations for your for many generations. Amen. Are you excited about that? Are you excited about that? Wonderful. So now, if we just move on very quickly, because in this camp we have to move fast. If we move on quickly, we are going to see now Mission South Africa. Amen. Amen. You see, you must live and die as though everything depends on you. Some of us who have started churches and the churches have not worked is because you don't live and die as though everything depends on you. You somehow feel that something is going to happen to you or happen upon you. But you must live and die as though everything depends on you. Amen. In South Africa and nobody else. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. So I want us to go out of this camp feeling that Mission South Africa, right, depends on us. When was the last time I came here for a camp? That was, um, how many years ago is that? Three years ago. Yeah. Now, many times, you know, Bishop Clufio and others have suggested to me, you know, I should come for a camp. And I, and I said, no, these, pe these people, they are, not, they are not taking me serious. They are not taking the message serious, seriously. So 
So I don't see why I should come and spend my time there. And recently I was in America and I told them that if they don't go and start a church in every state, I'm not going to come there again to do their, any camp meeting for them. They should be there. Because I get tired when I'm doing the camp meetings. It's not like I, I'm just, it, I'm, I'm, I'm not like a parrot. You just play, then you start talking. And then you say, press stop. It's not like that. Are you with me? Yeah. So a mission South Africa, you know, we must have, it's a mission. What is the mission? The mission South Africa is, is none other than the mission of church planting and putting churches everywhere that they must be. Amen. And who is going to start those churches and who is going to be in charge of those churches? No one else but you. There is no other important person here than you. And you must think of yourself as somebody who the mission depends on. It depends on you. It depends on you. That is where you work well. When you feel that it depends on you. So you must be here as a young man because there's only one person here can change the whole of South Africa. If, if there was one person who was to even do what God has used me to do in my short ministry in South Africa only, it would affect South Africa. Yes. If one of you here was to be able to rise up and do what God has used me to do for 25 years as a pastor, in starting churches in different places and doing so many things here in South Africa, it will really affect South Africa. Just in South Africa, no other country. Because I, I, I don't want you to think about other countries. Just think about uh, South Africa. And it's all, about, it's, all about, it's all about you. You know, somebody was asking, where do you get these people from? This person who does this, person who does this, the person who does this. And all. I said, look, the people that I have are the people, anybody who I see in front of me, that's the person. That's the next person for what I need. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, there's nobody invented anywhere who knows a lot of things. We are just about to start our crusade in um, South Africa. Healing Jesus crusade. I think you saw the Healing Jesus Crusade buses. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying is real. And those buses didn't come from uh, West Africa. They are from here. Yeah. And um, where will I get people? I need South African people to work with the Crusades. Where am I going to get the people from? When I open my eyes, I look straight, I see the person. <laughs> if, if the person is not somewhere far in a place, I'm going to look. When I open my eyes, the person I see, is that the person? And that person will start, will start working with the person. That is why you see some of you here have been at crusades working. It's because you are supposed to work in the crusades. Because the person you have is the person who is going to do the work. Are you listening to me? So what I'm trying to say is that don't look far when you are thinking of who is going to do Mission South Africa. I have no delusions at all. It's the, it's the people that I'm seeing. Those are the Mission South Africa people. What if I can see you? You are the one. If I can see you, you are the one. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. You are the one. Who is going to be used by the Lord to do the mission. The mission of church planting. Building churches. Doing the will of the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Mission South Africa. And why are we doing Mission South Africa? Because we want to prepare the way of the Lord. And I explained to you already, prepare the way of the Lord. It is, it is, it is like, a, that is what is written in the Bible. So it sounds so fantastically spiritual. But what it means is prepare for the Lord. Uh, prepare, his, his, prepare to see him. Prepare to meet him. Prepare to encounter him. Prepare for your meeting with God. All right? And as you prepare for your meeting with the Lord, you'll be doing the mission. That's the way to do it. If you die now, what are you going to tell God when he sees you? Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Now, turn with me to Matthew. Um, turn with me to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28. Wow. Verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Wow. What is the Bible saying? The Bible is telling us the great commission the commandment that was given to all of us go ye into the world preach the gospel to every single nation and teach them now the great commission includes teaching teaching doesn't take place in three days and you to teach them you must gather them into a place to teach them so this great commission is actually the commission to plant churches. Please, this camp is about a serious topic. If you were thinking of some other topic, we can organize a bus for you tomorrow morning. You, go, you just go back. Tell us your neighbor. Neighbor, are you looking for some other topic to help your marriage? There's no marriage school here. To help your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your prosperity, whatever. There's nothing like that here. Please, tomorrow morning there is a bus for all returnees. You just go back to wherever you came from. Please, I don't want any difficulty at this camp meeting. Amen. And tonight is just an introduction because you are tired. We are all tired, but at least we can start. Amen. Amen. So the Great Commission, I, somebody called it the Great Commission. It's not called the Great Commission in the Bible, but it's a great commandment. And it is to preach, and it's to preach the gospel to all countries. Let's forget about other countries, even just so, let's think of South Africa, all provinces, all towns, all cities, all villages in South Africa. Because in those days, there wasn't even a country like South Africa. It's recently that we had it formed. We had Zulus, Sutus, and different small, small groups. Some of you were Shaka, the Zulus. Um, <laughs> children and you were from other tribes all over the place. There was nothing. So when Jesus was saying, go into all nations, you were just tribesmen. You understand? Yeah. 
So let us, let us even limit ourselves to the South African borders, the nations within South Africa. And South Africa has enough different countries and groups within it. Hey! Go into all, not some. When we were coming, our bus parked by uh, a field. We parked by a field. To, somebody had left something, so we parked by a field. And I look out on the field. Vast Fields, vast, very, very, very huge, as far as the eye could see. And they had planted corn. And I was saying to the people in the past, look outside. Why did they not plant seeds just in this, just about 100 feet around in one little corner? But they planted seeds in the whole field. What are we doing? We have the whole field before us. And we are planting seeds in Kauteng. Or just in little sunny side or some small little section. And the whole field is there. And we're planting seed. You wait until the judgment day. You'll be very surprised how beastly it will be for you. You will regret for the rest of your life. In eternity. Doctor, you said one day you did an exam. Was your A level? A level. What happened? Chemistry. A level chemistry. Yes. My final exam. And I was supposed to explain what is meant by regret. Regret. Where you regret something and you want to rush back to do it. Tell me what happened. Final A level and after this you go to university. So, so you either become a teacher, a doctor, a lawyer, a carpenter, depend on what you do, how well you do in this particular exam. We call it A-levels. A-levels. Do you have A-levels here? You used to have A-levels here, I'm sure. British system. Some years ago. Some schools do it. Okay, A-levels and O-levels. Yeah, okay. So I had studied very hard. I wanted to go to medical school. And I had been passing my exam. So this final exam... I was supposed to answer five questions. The first question is compulsory, and then there are other questions, and you choose four out of the rest. When I was answering the questions, I realized that I had finished very early, and the rest were still writing the exam. So I was very surprised that they were not really <laughs> answering the questions very fast. So I, I did my first question and answered three questions instead of four. So number one and three instead of number one and four other questions. So because you had in your mind number one and three is four. Yes. One plus three is four. <laughs> Not doing that was one plus three uh, plus four is five. So I was very confident. I answered the questions very well. One and three. And I was wondering why they were not very good. Why they were not answering the questions very well. So we finished. And we're going out of the exam room discussing the questions. And somebody just passed the comment that, wow, the fifth question was very difficult for him. The one at the back. The one at the back. There was a question at the back I had not seen. So the fifth question was difficult. I said, which fifth question? So I took the answer, the, the, the question paper, because we are allowed to take the question paper away. So when I took the question paper and I turned it, <laughs> there was a question at the back. My world ended. <laughs> I mean, I knew that was the end. I, I looked back to the exam hall that if I could just go back and tell them that I, 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 I did not read the question well and that I can answer the question. I you can. See, I can. Very capable of answering it. But in the exam room, I did not read the instruction very well. And got everything messed up. One and three is one four. One and three is four. Meanwhile, it was supposed to be one and four. 
it's five. But I don't know how my eyes saw the... No, there was, was four in your head. There was four in my head. So, so I didn't even bother. One to and look. three is four. It's four. Or four questions. Four. Or four. Answer one question, question one. Four other questions. Answer question one and four other questions. But I saw it as answer four questions. Do you understand? Answer, answer question one and four other questions. And I saw it as answer, answer four. So when I saw question one, and the rest, I mean, I didn't need to turn the paper because I could answer all the questions there. So I just picked any three and answered them. Not knowing that there was something at the back. And I regretted. But it was late. I couldn't turn back to correct it. And I had to pay for it. I paid the price for it. <laughs> wow. Hey. Some of you will get to heaven and you will say, I can. I could. I could have. I could have. I want to go back. But I can't. I know somebody who knows personally past presidents of a certain country whose name begins with a G. Like Germany. It's in countries like Germany. Or Guatemala. He said that all of them, all those past presidents, they all wish they could go back to do things that they realized that we could have done this when we were president. Why didn't we do it? And they are so messed up and they are so powerless today that they wish they could go back because there was a time that they had power. And then when you come out of it, you realize that, so what was I thinking about? What was I thinking about? Hey. So my dear friends, what are you thinking about? You ask yourself one day when you get to us, ah, so me, what was I thinking about? What was I thinking about? That's one of the reasons why I had this camp, you know. I was thinking if I get to heaven, and I'll say, no, but if I try and I, I, I said to myself, if I try and I have a camp every week, every week in my life, I try and have a camp every week from Thursday to Saturday. I thought about it. Now, so I was thinking, what if I get to heaven? So why, why didn't you have a camp with this and a camp here and a camp here and a camp here and a camp here and a camp here? You know, then so let me try. Lest I also come to a place when I will look back and say that, ah, so what was I doing every week? Thursday to Saturday. Every Thursday, what was I doing? That's why I said I don't want any other non-South Africans to come here. I'm going to them. I'll go there. I have time. Now that I'm in power. <laughs> yeah. Now that I'm in power, I'll go there. Yeah. Wow. So the Great Commission, go to the nation, the places, the groupings, because human beings are in groups. And there is no way they will ever blend into one big group. No matter the flag you have, South Africa is made of many different groups. Oh, what? Rainbow. White and black and colored. You are the country that uses colors to describe yourselves. It's the only country in the world that I know that does that. You use colors to d divide yourselves. And amongst the blacks, you have more groupings. You don't even marry yourselves or trust yourselves. Yeah. True. 
So, the different groups are waiting for somebody. Go into all the world. Go into every province. Go. God is waiting for you to get up and go. What a shame when you don't go. Huh? South Africa. South Africans are known for staying in their own cloisters. South Africans are known for looking inwardly and not looking outward. You cannot travel to any African country and see a South African pastor having a church. Not a large church, a church. Not a, a large church, just a church. You cannot go anywhere and see a South African, a black South African, or a colored South African, or a white South African. And you are an Indian South Africa, and you have had huge churches and ministries, but you never see any South African outside your borders that I am a South African and I have come to Nigeria with a mission to build a church here and establish and do the work of you will never see. That is why anybody here who opens your mouth to criticize either a Ghanaian or a Nigerian, you are cursing yourself for coming here. Because you see, they are the opposite of you in this regard, going out into the world. You can't tell me that God has not moved in South Africa. God has done so many great things that you could have shared with the rest of us. When you come to South Africa, even this place that we are in, there is nothing like this anywhere. Whatever lodge, there's parks, there's that you drive to your country with smooth roads and all these things. We are not used to such things. The rest of Africa doesn't have such things. You have like a super state. But you are, you are just looking inwards. Your eyes are turned this way, backwards and inside. It's true. That is why I came to this camp to take many of you with me to Ghana to train you how to go outside your country. Yeah. Where, where, you see, Makaiban and Kaelo and Co. You see, I took you to some countries. You do go to Liberia. Who was the one telling me that when I used to say there's no light, there's no road? Is it you? Is it you? Or somebody else? Or Makaiban? You know, when they went out, they realized that, look, what you have here is super, super, super something. But your eyes are telling Inward. And it is the sign of a people that are not yet healed. That's how black Americans are. Their eyes are also turned into themselves. You will not go anywhere and see a black American who is having, is on a mission. It's like I've come here to build churches for God or whatever. Really, you will really, but you see white people. But the, if you take only black Americans, they form the eighth richest nation in the whole world. The wealth of only the black American community. The eighth richest group in the world. Yeah. And they only look inside. <laughs> and they don't look out. They can't go out. It's from the oppression that they had. Do you understand? And the slavery... Coming out of it, it's not, re you see, rebellion, being rebellious and fighting is an unintelligent way of getting healing. It's that let's just brute force, let's just fight because we feel oppressed. So let's just break anything around us. No, but intelligently moving forward, that shows your healing. Do you understand? So I came here to tell you that you are as wise or wiser, perhaps, than anybody, anybody else. You are special. You have to give something also to Africa. 
And if you wouldn't give anything to Africa, give something to South Africa. If you don't care about anybody, eh? care about South Africa. I'm telling you, if you don't like yourselves, you don't care, right? Care about South Africa. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. Yeah. And it's a sign of people not healed. You are not healed of apartheid. You are not healed of the oppression that came with the struggle, whatever you call it. It's not gone out of you fully. Because when it's gone out of you, you it's not rebellion, like fighting anything and everything or crime. Or doing illegal things. But moving forward intelligently with strength, with creativity, and with something new. To be a blessing to other people. Which, which, uh, which black America have you seen coming to stand? <laughs> you don't find, but you find white. Assemblies of God is white. Church of God in Christ is black. You find white uh, people. They will go I'm sure you have assemblies of God here. Plenty. Not only here, in Ghana, everywhere, South America, all over Africa. They will go out and they will die for what they believe. But you, you see, and I'm showing you the statistics. I'm showing you the statistics. In 1996, 95, 97, we used to watch videos of churches in South Africa which were having revival. We used to watch. I still have those videos. I can show you on the screen here. You will see even people like Bishop Musa Sono and others on it. Young men. There were great things happening here but no one ever thought of like let's say there's a place called Ghana or Nigeria or anywhere. It's not that God hasn't moved here before. I met one American pastor who said that if you want to get certain books, you, if you come to South Africa, you get certain books. I think I don't know if it's Benny Hinn who told me that. You get certain books you find in South Africa, but you don't find elsewhere. God has moved in South Africa for years. But it's like we stay for ourselves, you know? Yeah. And even for yourself, what are you doing for yourselves? If you are even thinking of only you only like yourself, what are you doing for yourself now? Share. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. You're not doing anything for yourselves. I came to encourage you to build your own churches for yourselves. And I'll continue to encourage you. And I'm going to encourage people. Look, no matter, Bible says, a sower went out to sow. A sower went out to sow. And that's what I'm doing. I'm sowing. And I'm encouraging more seats. Yeah. I'm going to internationalize you. And take out the narrow, the narrow mindedness. The inward looking. To open your eyes and see that you are blessed. And you have something to give. Where is she? Sing it. You see this song. It's our time. It's our time. Where is Danny? He's not here. Where is everybody? Okay, sing it again for me. It's, it's our, time. our time to believe. It's our time to love and live. There was a time we received, but now it's time for us to give. Standing hand in hand together, let's reach out and touch our world. Can you hear the Spirit calling? Can you hear the Spirit calling? Can you hear the Spirit calling? It's a time. It's a time to believe. It's a time to love and live. There was a time we received. But now it's time for us to give, standing hand in hand together. Let's reach out and touch our world. Can you hear the Spirit calling? Can you hear the Spirit calling? Can you hear the Spirit calling? It's our 
time. There was a time you received. There was a time we received, but now it's time for us to give. There was a time we used to borrow, now it's time for us to lend. There was a time we used to follow, now it's time for us to lead. It's our world, it's our, world. It's our, nation. It's our nation, and it's a place of destiny. It's our time to believe, it's our time to love and live. There was a time we received, but now, now it's, it's time, time for us for to us calling can you hear the spirit calling can you hear the spirit calling it's a time there was a time we used to receive there was a time we received now it's time for us to give there was a time we used to borrow now it's time for us It's our world, it's, it's our, our nation. nation, and it's a place of destiny. Wow. South Africa is a place of destiny. It's a place of destiny. And, and with, the death, with the death of Madiba, you see, it ends a, a certain generation. It's a chapter, it's finished. It's, it's over. It's no more. It's history now. Now there's a, another generation. You, you can sit down and there's no more struggle for any. No one can take it away from you. You are 40 million. 35 million of you are black and 5 million white, isn't it? Something like that. White, huh? white people can never rule you again. There is no way you can ever be ruled. So that thing is past. You will win every, no matter what bad thing the government does, you will win that for the next 40 years, the same people will be in power. Yeah. Unless some other group is able to divide yourself, but it, there is, no, if it's white versus black, yeah, Charlie, you have won for the next, I mean, 100 years, you are there. And I'm sure the black people are having more children than the, the, the whites. So, so the voting here, Charlie. You have won, cry. If that is what you wanted, you've won. So what are you going to do now? Hmm. So, my dear friends, it's time for South Africa to rise up and come out of um, out of looking inwards. Okay? And start looking out to do the will of the Lord. Now, turn with me to Matthew chapter 3. Prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. Matthew chapter 3. Verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea saying, Repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is, as, is at hand. Verse 3. For this is he. Amen. That was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his paths straight. Amen. 
And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins. And his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees or the far to see and the sad you see or the sad to see people come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, in Ghana we call it Onanka. Onanka. It's a viper. Who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring ye therefore fruits, meat for repentance. Think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able, all right, to raise up stones as children unto Abraham. Now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. Jesus answering and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for it becometh thus to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him and lo a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased wow this summarizes the, miss, the message prepare the way of the Lord amen before the first coming of Jesus there, were, there was a prophet and there was a message and there was a preparation. Prepare the way of the Lord. And before the coming of Jesus again, there will be again a prophet who is preparing the way of the Lord and who is preparing the way of the Lord in exactly the same way. Are you listening to me? So, by the grace of God, tomorrow morning, we are going to launch straight into how to prepare for, to see this Lord, how to, how to prepare for the, ourselves, for the Lord in South Africa. And ultimately, it will land us in Mission South Africa. Of whom? Who are going to be the major players in Mission South Africa? I can't see them. I'm not seeing them. Am I seeing them now? I'm seeing them right. If I don't need any special dream or visions, I can see you right here. You are the ones who are going to be used by the Lord. Amen. To prepare mission South Africa and prepare for the Lord. If you don't do it, then you would have failed your generation. Now, 
this generation of South Africans will always be blamed and cursed for establishing certain evils in this country. It will always be attributed to those here and now who voted that two men should marry and two women should marry. It will be this group. Hitler, on the day that he killed himself, the 30th of April, 1945, said just before he killed himself, he told, because his secretary and others were there, he said, tomorrow morning, millions of people will curse me. Yes. Tomorrow, when the world, when the world wakes up, millions will curse me for what I have brought and what I have done. And it's true. He's responsible for the deaths of more than 50 million people. And so people have filmed him watched him, created documentaries about him more than anybody else, trying to see was it a demon or was it a human being? Trying to bring out the demon. But they are confused because he looks like a gentle old German man. And they are confused by that picture. So remember, when South Africans wake up next 20 years, would they look and curse you, your generation. And you brought backsliding and certain things into South Africa. Or would they look back and praise you? You know, like how we look when we see Kenneth Hagin and some of the great fathers. Even we can see some of the people like Pastor Ray McCauley and Bishop Moses Suno and some of these great people, what they have brought to South Africa. Yeah. But what about you? <laughs> yeah. Are people going to wake up and curse you? And say, you got what you did. Or what you didn't do. Today, when I meet people from French-speaking Africa, you can immediately see the difference between French-speaking and English-speaking. The demons that are in the French-speaking are more have you ever heard of a French man of God? Huh? Have you ever heard of a French man of God? Yeah. Because there was no John Wesley in France. They never had that person. Yeah. <laughs> they had a man called Albert Robespierre. Albert, Albert Rose. And he brought the French Revolution. That's what he had. But the John Wesley preacher and the William Booth who brought the Salvation Army. They didn't have that in France. So you've never heard of a Frenchman or like a white man who is a French man of God. So they don't have anybody to read a French, black French world, which is half of Africa. They don't have anybody to read up to follow. They don't speak English either. Yeah, when you go into the French world, you see more sex machines. If you think you are sexual, then come, I'll show you sexy French. Hey! Exotic styles. I, I, you see, I am saying this to explain to you that when, when somebody, the absence of somebody it can bring a curse on everybody else who is coming. The absence, you see, there was a king in England and he was allowed to live and John Wesley came and preached and the Methodist thing started at that time. But at the same time, there was nobody like that in France and they had a king. So this man came, Albert Robespierre, and brought the revolution and killed the king and killed any, every important person there in the town and brought the revolution. You get it? I, mean, I never had a, such a great any man of God like that. So his absence led to what we have 
It's the, over hundreds of years it happened. We are products of Catholics, Methodists, Orthodox. Everybody has contributed to what we are today. Yeah. So when somebody doesn't play his part, we are always limping. And we are always twisted. Because somebody who should have written a book didn't write it. Supposing John hadn't written his book, we wouldn't have known that Jesus raised somebody last called Lazarus from the dead after four days. We wouldn't have known Jesus healed the blind man in John chapter 9. We wouldn't have known that Jesus healed the man by the pool of Bethesda. We wouldn't know if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what if you had just not written. And I am sure that there was an, a book of Andrew and some other people, they, maybe they didn't write, or, we are tired, we can't write. So Matthew has written, it's okay. <laughs> Until you see yourself as important, you never fulfill your, your call. When you see yourself as critical in this thing, you start to say, look, I have to do it. Something depends on me. That's why I write books. Even when I write, most of the time I'm discouraged when I'm writing. I feel discouraged. I feel, who will read this? You can ask my secretaries, those that I work with. I'm always telling them, who is ever going to read this book? Nobody will read it. Are you sure anybody will read it? So, daddy, somebody will read it. They will read it. Are you sure nobody will read it? I'm so surprised when I see people reading them. Yeah. People read it. But when I'm writing, the devil always told there is no need to write what you are writing. Some people have already written. Don't you see? Some people have already written these things. To the making of books, there is no end. Mr. Man, put your pen down. But when I see myself as important, that what I'm writing is important, and that somebody's life and ministry will depend on what I'm writing. So sit up and write it. So somebody, it's important. You, you better write it. It's the same thing for you. If you see yourself as very important, you must value yourself. Value your contribution that somebody is depending on you. You see yourself as very important. Very important enough for you to come to Ghana. I'm going to make an altar call for people to come to Ghana. And this time, they are going to come instantly. All the camps, you see, I watch. You think when I go, I said, I will be waiting. When I came for this, as a wake old sleeper, not even one person. I had meetings with people. Come, so we will come to Ghana. We are going. Not even. Like somebody went to a funeral, you know, and he said he came back. He said they didn't serve anything, not a single granite, you know, a single peanuts, peanuts, not even one. Not a single peanut came. The mission. But I remember another camp where I came and several of them they came for dinner with me and they all came to Ghana. Were you part of that group? Stand up. Who are those, that, that? A, lot, a lot of them. There was a long line of them. They all came. They came, they came to Bible school. Several of them. Did you come? You came for the dinner but you didn't come. Yeah. And all those seats you see over the years, the years will go, come and go by, and you see that. Peter also, you see, you, you came to Ghana, didn't you? A lot of people came to Ghana. No, no. You came, you didn't have a baby in Ghana. Who had a baby in Ghana? Yeah, you had a baby in Ghana. You had baby, you had you, all of you. Yeah. They are all pastors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, they are all here. Some of you came to Bible school. Yeah. Yeah. Fred, others. Yeah. So, I tell you, with time, and uh, these people, I didn't allow them to come. Mandla and uh, Buyo, well, they are not South Africans. I didn't allow them here. I'm, go I'm going to see them at where they are. All of them, they, are they all came. I'm trying to take them out. You know, so there was a generation before a younger generation. Well, but you came to Ghana, why are you not standing up? Oh, you are too big to stand up now. You are not into standing up. You are not, you are not into standing up. Fire, 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 fire. <laughs> okay. 
qué? Are you, are you happy? You are very happy? Aha, okay. You must be very happy. Hallelujah. There was a generation that came and were trained to look out broader, broader than the typical person here. Wider. See more. See more. See more than your own little problems. Huh? Huh? When you reach out, it's not because you don't have personal problems. Sometimes your personal problems are more. But when you reach out, you see that somebody's problems are bigger. Then you stop talking about yours and say, look, let's concentrate on your problem. But not that you don't have personal problems. When a pastor is preaching, it doesn't mean he doesn't have problems. Hey! We have a lot of problems, but we are seeing other problems too. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So I want you to see yourself as it depends on me. It depends on me. It is my time. Yeah. And many of you, more than hundred, more than hundred of you here are supposed to be seeds. Yes, you are supposed to be seeds who are going to go out and do something special for the Lord. And all of you hundred who are here, whom God has called. Where are you? Can I see your hands? Can I see your hands? And I'm starting with, the, I'm starting with, where are you? I want to see your hand. And don't raise your hand if you are not serious, because when I see your hand, no, that's it. Once your hand comes up, no, it has been caught. Come, come, come to me in the front. Come. You lifted your hand, come. Don't look around to see if somebody else is coming. Don't look to your left or to your right. Come, come nearer, come nearer. Seeds, you are seeds. But a, a sower went out to sow. Come, Mission South Africa. Satan, your power is broken in Jesus' name. Hundred. Go this way. 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 Uh, come and count them for me, Prince or Randy. Come and count them. Hundred. I feel that more than hundred people are going to come. Give yourself to. But God loves South Africa. God loves South Africa greatly. I will never look. When a man does not have forty million spams in one ejaculation, usually you, you don't get pregnant. You understand? You don't understand. Do you know ejaculation? With it, with it, we measure the spams. When we are trying to make somebody pregnant, you, you count the spams. Okay? You need 40 million per mil to get pregnant. When it is below, usually it, it, it's very difficult. To be. It's possible, but it's difficult. Even though you need one. So God's method is to produce a lot of seeds. No, you, I said, there's one person here. You alone can make all the difference in something. Just one of you here. I don't know who. But I will never discount you. People look and say, so how do you get these people? Because when I look straight, the person I'm seeing, that is the person. I don't have to look further. You are, God is going to use you. God is going to use you for this. How many people do I have? Ah, you are still counting. Come on. 
Corolla come on stage. And uh, what's his name who plays the piano? What's his name? Huh? Tabiso. Tabiso. How many do you have, please? 106. Everybody's 106. Very good. 106. Yeah. Everybody else stand up. Everybody else stand up. Everybody lift your hands. It's a very spiritual moment. Because our camp is starting and finishing. As we start. The power of God is here. Mando Sakabala Shandala. Receive the grace of God now. You see, just let them let them down. Just let them let them down. Down, down, down. Receive the power of God. And receive the call of God. The one who makes the whole world has everything in his hands. My God. He wants the world to know him. My God. Receive the grace of God. He has called us to the kingdom for such a time. Receive the grace of God. It's a time to Receive the grace of God. Standing hand in hand together, let's reach out and touch our world. Can you hear the Spirit calling? Can you hear it? Can you hear the Spirit calling? Can you hear the Spirit calling? It's our time. It's our time to Can you hear the Spirit calling? 
for all these ones who have come. Lift your hands up in the front here. Thank you for all these who are volunteering themselves. They are the first fruits of many at this camp meeting, giving themselves off and over to your work. Thank you. I pray for the rest. Everybody else, lift your hands. For your son, a certain man had two sons. One said, Sir, I go, but he went not. And the other said, Sir, I go not, but he went. Let it be, O Lord, that all hands lifted up here today be affected by your spirit and your power to turn into supernatural seeds planted in South Africa in every corner, every province, every section, every area, and every category of people. I thank you. For he who began a great work shall surely bring it to a perfect end. Thank you for your blessing and your help. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Now, listen to me before you go back, all of you here. My prayer for you is that you are going to become special seeds. This group, all of you here, are calling you first fruits of this camp. Because our campus is only in session for a few minutes. You are already a seed and a fruit. As we go, more people are going to become more seeds. But when I call for you and I say, I want first fruits, remember that it is those of you here. Because I will meet with you before we close, by God's grace. Amen. May God send and appoint his angel to make a straight path for you that you may walk into his will and become swordsmen, warriors, harvesters, workers, laborers, ministers, shining lights of the gospel of Jesus Christ into the whole world. May you be brighter, brighter, May you shine brighter than you have ever shown before because of this appointment in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may go back to your seats. Hallelujah. Wow. Now, before we finally leave this place and go out of here, we are going to receive an offering. Amen. These people who came from to the front are the greatest offering you can ever give, which is yourself. But now I want us to give some money because we have so many expenses and so many bills and so many of us here have been sponsored to come. Is it not true? Is it not true? And I've been bust here. Amen. So, just to make it possible, we want to be generous. No matter how little you have, you must become a giver. I want us to come out of something where we say, in South Africa, this and this. In South Africa, this and this. It's a sign of something is wrong. Because South Africa is even compared to the rest of Africa, more blessed. You, don't have, you have to travel to see. When we say there is no light in Liberia, there is no electricity at all from north to south, east and west. There is not even one light. <laughs> you just can't believe it. In Guinea-Bissau, there is no electricity at all. Huh? You see the poles and there is no, there is no light. So, you just don't travel. You see, pastor's ministry Sometimes they have more marital problems than you have ever had. But they minister to you and you see them as helping your marriage. But if you go into pastors' lives, huh, sometimes it's more because of the pressures of the ministry. The problems are even more. I tell you, 
ministry is not from perfection towards imperfection it's from imperfect to imperfect that is the ministry it's from the imperfect to the imperfect this man when i was in uh, malaysia are you listening now all those of you who are busy bodies always going in out up and down from tomorrow that ministry of busy body is cancelled in jesus name tell your neighbor i'm no more in the busy body ministry from tonight is my last night i resign after tonight you can never call me for a busy body ministry again in jesus name amen when you are busy body you can easily backslide because you don't hear the message yeah I'll come back to the story I was telling you just now. I was telling you a story of something. Malaysia. Remind me. But before, I'll tell you another story. Kenneth Hagen was having a, a convention in somebody's church. And throughout the convention, he was there, I think, like two weeks. Every morning, he was doing teachings and evening, he was ministering. The pastor of the church never attended. The, past, the one who invited him, his wife was there, but he didn't come. He was going here, going here, going here, going here, every, every time. Then the Lord, he, he met with the wife, and he asked the, the pastor's wife, do you know that your husband is going to die? And she said, oh, I, th I don't know. I don't know what, I, I forget the answer. That, but I said, do you know that your husband is going to die? She said, let your husband sit down and listen to the teachings. It will save his life. I think he came once and then he continued the busybody ministry. I'll come back to the Malaysia story, but I'm on the busy, busy, busybody story now. And it's very important that you listen to this. He finished the meeting and the pastor never came to sit down. When he left, the Lord told him, Kenneth Hagen, the pastor who invited you is going to die. So he went and he told a pastor, friend, he traveled to another town. I forget the exact names of the town, but when I listen to that message again, I will memorize the town, name of the town. When he got to the town, he said, you see the church I came from? The church I came from last week. The pastor of that church, next week Sunday, he would die in, the, he would die in church on Sunday. Yeah. He told the pastor of the next church, you know he was a traveling minister, so from church to church, church to church, church to church. He told the pastor, he said, the church I came from, the pastor is going to die next Sunday in his pulpit. And the following Sunday evening, Pastor was in his pulpit preaching and he died in the pulpit. The, the pastor that he came to was afraid. You know, the one that he had come to, yeah, he was afraid. <laughs> so, I'm just saying this to say that the busy body ministry is a very dangerous ministry. You think you are ushering, you think you are doing this, you are fixing lights, you are connecting this, you are doing all oh, before you realize you are not, you are never there. And you are always not really receiving what. You need to receive. So be careful of that. Back to Malaysia. Now, in Malaysia, I was telling you, you know, uh, the pastor of the largest church in the world, you know, the redeemed church. And when we say largest church, two kilometers by two kilometers, when you give your life to Christ, you take a bus to the altar. You take a bus. You go here, you cut the bus. No, I want to give my life to Christ. You go here, you catch the bus, and they drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he's building a new one. Three kilometers by three kilometers. A new one. <laughs> yeah. You give your life to Christ. You go to the bus. It's bus stop. You take the bus, and you go <laughs> to the front. It's too far. You cannot walk. It's two kilometers. He started with about 40 people. And the church has become millions, literally. 
One of my pastor friends, he called me from there this week. He said, look, he went to the new one that they are building. Yeah. And, the, and yeah, oh, he was in Malaysia. You know, he, he was there. I, he preached and I also preached. I was honored to be sitting, preaching and he's sitting there. Oh, yeah. He's 72 years old. You know, God has really used him. You know, I, I, I don't know. Do you know why I'm telling you this story? Because there's something I want to tell you. I know what I want to tell you, but do you, do you remember why I wanted to tell you what I want to tell you? <laughs> eh? No, no, the busybody, not the busybody. Marriage? Perfect. It's not, from the imp- it's not from a perfect to a perfect. It's not a perfect person. Yeah. This man with the two million, three million members, you know, he was talking, when he was in Malaysia, he was talking, he said, look, one day he went somewhere, and he was there, and they said a certain lady wants to see him. And the lady has a problem. And the lady said she really needs to see him. So, when the lady finally was brought to him, when he saw him, he recognized, said, ah, this is one of my former girlfriends. <laughs> It's not for my for my girlfriends. <laughs> yeah. Just one of my former girlfriends. Yeah. 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 So he was explaining something and then the, the lady saw that he was now an anointed person. Yeah, and how he is, I mean, a different dimension. She wanted him to pray for her or pray for the child, something. Former. Yeah, it's a former. You see, what I'm explaining is that when God is, will use you, it's not that you are good or that you were good or something perfect. Those, those people who like you were good, perfect, those are the imperfect. You are more imperfect because of your feeling of righteousness. And goodness. Hey! So, brothers and sisters, I'm sharing this with you to let you know that God's using is the imperfect ministering to the imperfect. That's why you offer sins as a priest for yourself and for the people. You can never just offer sins for the people. You have to offer for the people and for yourself. Wow, it's powerful. How many of you feel the presence of God here? I tell you, yeah. So, I don't know why I'm telling you all these things, but I'm telling you because there's something you're supposed to hear. God is going to just raise you up and use you. You will be shocked. You will be shocked with with who God is going to use amongst us. Yeah, God is going to select. Tomorrow I'll show you. Stones. He's about to select stones. And it's about to use them. Yeah. So be ready for God to use you. Amen. Take out your offering. No matter how little you have, never reduce yourself to the chairman, poverty chairman of South Africa. You are not the poverty chairman. Tell yourself, I am not the poverty chairman of this country. I'm the prosperity anointed servants of the Lord.